first um, 10 minutes ish of the session we're just um, doing housekeeping and checking the situation in Hewa's twin there's a conflict going on over there between the Teladi Peronet um, coalition versus the Xenon uh, with a very few odd Ministry of Finance ships uh, patrol in the region as well and here um, in the beginning um, when the safe game is loaded there is always a bit of a glitch between the uh, fighters and entities um, their hits don't register there's a bit of a camera switching going on here um, in order to have them initialized properly um, so what seems like a eternal conflict over here and uh, the Xenons um, having a bit of an issue is that um, they lack their large class vessels and they go all the way to extra large um, capital ships um, starting from the K and um, given that the how the AI works they do not always um, get to um, have a efficient fleet composition uh, what happens is um, sometimes the K can go um, out of um, range with their support fleet or didn't even um, accompany with one or vice versa the support fleet may go out of the way and um, starting to engage enemies outside of their um, fleet leaders radar range um, leaving them vulnerable to attacks so there's a bit of a trade um, trading blows here. Uh, we have some Teladi um, destroyers uh, trying to intercept the K which just emerged from the superhighway exit um, into He Was Twin One. The K is not exactly doing the best and um, it took some time for it to get get into close and rolling range and by the time it reaches uh, by the time it reaches the Teladi um, destroyer here it's not exactly facing um, uh, turning to um, have its turret facing the um, Teladi destroyer quick enough uh, having um, in the end um, this single destroyer pretty much took out half of the six available graviton turrets with its missiles, uh, missile turrets and this K managed, um, did eventually manage to destroy this uh, this destroyer here, this phoenix um, however at a pretty heavy cost term to its subsystems uh, most of them being taken out um, including the engine uh, they did not survive long eventually as um, there are more more of the um, alliance fleets coming through um, from the um, trinity sanctum sector um, they keep pouring in and eventually this K was taken out and the Xenons were pushed back into defense um, in the next sector um, he was twin two and this will be the last part we see here in action before we turn our focus into the main uh, activity of this session we are going to be experimenting with various type of missiles um, that um, we have access to 
that include some of the missiles that um, that include some of the missiles that's not very common. So here we have a very happy split manager, a faction rep from the three families. Um, we finally got our plus 20 rep and able to get our rattlesnake um, destroyers uh, fully fitted. So. Okay, thank you very much. So first of all, let's get the trade subscription so we don't have to put satellites everywhere and the next thing let's see what other um, blueprints that we need um, we still can't afford some of the um, extra large capital ship some um, blueprints so um, the Raptor carrier is out of our um, currently out of our budget uh, but that's not um, something that we're looking at testing this session we're just making sure we have all the necessary turrets needed for the destroyer and and these smaller size ships and here we're making sure we have all the en engines blueprints and missile blueprints so first of all, let's um, get our design um, ship fitting screen up. Here we gotta see what kind of large um, turret we gotta be fitting on the ship. At the moment, um, the main battery has to be there. And we have to check on the encyclopedia. Just to check um, the difference between these tracking turrets. And so far, it looks like um, the split tracking turret, um, all of them are compared to other places, is the rotation speed and their hull integrity. So over here um, they all have an extra plus 100 missiles capacity each turret um, which is really great but um, I think with uh, tracking missiles the rotation speed are probably um, doesn't have to be the main concern um, just a bit of a guess, um, trying to use these turrets to go against uh, mostly uh, long range engagements. So technically, technically um, they don't really need to rotate, um, have a high rotation speed. That was my guess to the start, I'm just um, referencing the encyclopedia about all different missiles. For a moment, the scattered, um, the scatter missile, um, the heavy scatter missile that we just seen, seems to have uh, turning rate um, properties and the uh, vertical horizontal strafing properties. And for a moment, um, it's a bit misleading because you thought they go into the tracking turrets, um, thinking that they are actually a kind of tracking missile. So what I ended up finding out is that they actually um, aren't tracking missiles. Um, they are more like a scatter shot, um, a bit like the shards, um, the shards battery. Um, they probably spread out about three degrees each, and so um, we'll find that out in later in the video. Um, about how the scatter missile tend to work. I'll uh, just say that uh, 
eventually it wasn't really ideal because at, at 3 degrees air variation and scattering angle um, all the way up to 46 kilometers means um, not many of the missiles would hit your intended target as they are really just a dump fire spray missile but I did not know about that um, before I went into testing these new uh, missile blueprints available from the free family so it took it took a long long time for me to test every one of them out um, and to realize that uh, how each missile would fit into our um, applicable scenarios um, in fighting or dealing with structures and so first of all we went with the starburst missiles um, and some interceptor missiles uh, as they are both tracking missiles by the encyclopedia um, very limited information here doesn't have none of them really have any description apart from their specifications and um, just fitting them there both onto the destroyer thinking that I might be able to switch missiles like the main guns and I was wrong so initially the heaviest missiles get get um, equipped and uh, armed which is the heavy starburst missiles which have 8.3 kilometers of effective range okay so here we're gonna make sure we got our turret set properly and go straight into Tharka's Cascade um, to test our missiles we having problems seeing the missiles firing initially not knowing what's causing it so apart from the flak turrets we can hardly see any um, we can hardly see any missiles being fired dealing with the small ships even though those starburst missiles can go at uh, almost 200 meters per second so we just experiment here and there with the turret settings and the ammunitions and we can find out they indeed have um, they indeed have fired two missiles and that was pretty hard to spot all right so we keep switching the scenes um, trying to find out um, the appropriate targets let's go for the K um, obviously the K is bigger we we're hoping to take out its surface elements with our tracker missiles okay. and hopefully the tracker missile turret unfortunately we don't have much time um, as there are two K's um, in close vicinity of each other and we just can't afford to wait for the missiles to actually firing um, that will put us in big trouble because um, in Falcus Cascade um, there's also a constant depletion of shields um, of the environmental hazard so we are forced to take out some of the turrets of the K after being within roughly five kilometers of each other and hardly see any missiles being fired I was like wondering why is that even the case I mean, because we even got into range of um, rolling range and into the range of um, rabbits and turrets now we can see a few missiles being fired now after we got into <laughs> the range of the gravity turret and that doesn't seem to be very helpful at all as the idea of the missiles is um, that we try to kite that we try to kite the enemy um, and while we're at uh, safe distance 
So something's definitely not right with the Starburst missiles. And we will, we will find out why um, as we continue to test it out um, throughout the game, um, throughout this session. So this is a fairly um, busy time right now. I'm trying to maneuver myself between 2Ks and as we got too close to both of them um, without the missiles being able to take out their turret defenses um, so we're forced to take them out with our main guns and um, the missiles also did not did any um, help taking out the um, medium and smaller size vessel escorts of the K. So it got us a little busy at the moment. As we can see, uh, we have the repair drones um, dispatched as some of our surface elements start suffering um, suffering structural damage. So here we are, um, trying to, still trying to maneuver around in between the caves, making sure they don't take me out before I get into a safer distance. Um, as you can see my shield has went down to half capacity and the rattlesnake only have one large shield generator so um, there's not a lot of buffer Maybe we can see some fighters has been assisted by the Argon ships that decided to come into um, the sector and join the conflict So at the moment we still don't see much of our um, missiles being fired. Uh, we having difficulty to we're also having difficulty to determine which missiles um, are actually ours and what are they actually firing at. Okay, so that one missile that is right in front of us is actually our missiles. I did not actually realize that at the time um, of actually recording. And yes, don't worry, why am I shooting at this uh, little ships? Um, it's the flak turrets. All right, so um, going back and review the recordings, and you can start seeing that these uh, starburst missiles are like like um, heavy trapping missiles um, with an explosion effect that looks like um, light and explosion effect that looks a bit like um, light torpedo but it also has a shorter slightly shorter range it does travel faster and it does not need torpedo launcher so in effect you can carry a lot of these missiles the only downside that we will find out is that it has a very short engagement engagement range and I have no idea how to increase it because the encyclopedia does not specify anything other than the effective range of the missile itself and it took a hard time to find out in my future experiments and down um, just behind this video um, that these starburst missiles actually need to acquire lock so without acquiring any lock um, they cannot be fired uh, to any target and unfortunately the lock range does not equal the effective um, range of the missiles uh, apparently they have about 
a lock range of 5 kilometers or 5.5 kilometers, which is exactly the same as the Graviton turrets. Make it completely um, useless for actually striking any um, large ships um, uh, as a meaningful chitine um, armament. Alright, so here I only need one um, one testing target for practice. So I decided to just get rid of the other K. Um, just in case, um, it has its turret repaired and got me in some difficult situation. Not that they usually don't repair that fast. But at, at this time, I'm already just disappointed by these Starburst missiles. Um, attributes that I just don't understand how it works um, at this point and that it's completely um, useless um, in the scenario that I wanted to um, that I wanted to use it for which is um, engaging engaging the xenon capitals at a decent safe distance due to their um, their uh, tonnage is fairly close to the smart missiles and um, but um, it's actually between the heavy smart missiles and the um, and the light torpedo so I thought DPS wise it might be a great choice to use on my large turret unaware of the fact that um, the turrets were also um, limited by the lock range of the missile itself so that uh, puts me in, well, puts the whatever ship I put into in harm's way when I try to engage a, a Xenon capital. Or in fact, any Xenon ships have roughly four to six kilometers um, range with their main guns or turrets. Maybe not the Positrons, which has about two kilometers, just over two. So here's um, where we started to see that oh, because we were trying to find see the missiles from the F2 from the F2 camera view, and uh, we just couldn't see the missiles. And here is what we eventually see that. So you can see those explosions are actually from the Starburst missiles. Um, but uh, at, the, at the time, I thought it was uh, some torpedo bombers from, from the Argons. Later, I, I only realized it was my own missiles, it was the Starbucks missiles. Um, a little later. As we can see that um, we are starting to fire the missiles at um, the K, but we are 3.3 kilometers away from it before our missiles um, would constantly um, fire at the K. And it is at this point I realized those are my missiles. So good damage output, but extreme poor range. So the Starburst missiles eventually gets a no from me um, that I would not want to use it um, in any scenarios for my missile turrets. So back to the drawing board, um, we are trying out something different. And here we are going to be um, soon be changing our missiles into the interceptor missiles because of a whopping 100 
38 kilometer range and which looks so impressive and I thought well it only has about 500 megajoules of damage output which might seem to be lacking but it's still perfect for hitting small um, crafts or um, oh, there we go I'll just take it out just for the sake of uh, complete yeah. testing yes um, so next up we're going to try out the interceptor missiles okay so the interceptor missiles are tracking missiles um, they use the, to be used in tracking turrets or tracking launchers and very small um, damage output for the individual missile itself. Uh, 500 megajoules that uh, make it one of the one of the lightest missiles um, available that I've seen. So here we're trying it out and initially we also having a bit of a hard time finding the missiles. Uh, here we go. It started launching and they are indeed super fast but they don't exactly have a great turn rate uh, for their speed and so they swarm around the targets but not exactly hitting them uh, when they are in such a close range and I would say under 20 kilometers they are fairly useless um, because when the enemy start boosting at you um, they tend to take a long time to even hit their targets and by the time we've wasted a ton of missiles <laughs> like, like this a small fighter and none of them actually were able to hit it uh, because it was <laughs> too close to us eventually the um, um, the Xenon fighter was taken out by the flax, more likely. However, we just go and confirm our test. Um, we're gonna shoot a bit more Xenons to uh, to experiment the usefulness of these missiles. Uh, as we can see, they're even having hard times um, hitting the Xenon piece. Um, when they got into such a close range so next up we are going to try it on the um, stationary structures and here we are talking about the surface elements of this um, xenon solar plant and here with uh, okay um, hundred and something kilometers and yes. How come there are no missiles firing when I'm only within 30 kilometers? You can see that. Okay, we're gonna try it out on a, a Xenon S construction ship, the mining ship, and we can see that it was firing, but it wasn't really hitting hard. 500 megajoules is really small for uh, for missiles like this. And so back, back to the um, impulse turret medium turrets on the station itself. We've already successfully taken out one at 24 kilometers. And so it takes about, well, let's see, two volleys, um, eight missiles to take out one turret, or eight to ten shots. Right, so we're just um, making sure that um, we are resupplying ourselves with the uh, interceptor missiles right now. Uh, just to test it out, um, between two um, destroyers, we just keep going back and forth the gate to um, resupply. So yeah, this is uh, potentially potentially ideal that uh, we could just sit at a uh, fairly, fairly safe range and having um, 
have been tracking missiles to actually hit um, at the station and surface elements and whatnot um, with a great comfort and safety. And all that is uh, very much of a plus, except this is nowhere near the 138 kilometers that um, the vessels was advertised for. Uh, so here yeah, we're going to try and we're trying to hit it um, at the mining ship S at 20 kilometers just to see how well these missiles fare. Um, to, and to actually intercept, which means to disable the travel drives if possible and it does work okay at 20 plus kilometers so uh, as I said um, as later we find out some of the missiles in the tracking turrets uh, needs to be um, need to acquire acquire um, weapon lock and the lock range does not equate to the effective range uh, and that is uh, something we will find out a bit later. But potentially, well, we're hitting their large turrets now. As you can see, that it takes a long time to take out even their single large Raviton turret. But uh, thanks to the speed of the uh, missiles and the uh, fire rates, um, it is not posing much of an issue. Uh, mind you, with uh, four large um, turrets um, on the rat, uh, sorry, on the rattlesnake, uh, it can hold 400 extra missiles, which gives 760 of total uh, mountable missiles, even if you don't mod your ship with a missile capacity mod, uh, which doesn't really give a lot of extra missiles that you can mount on a chassis but um, as you can see hitting a stationary target at 20 kilometers it's working okay uh, working brilliantly so albeit a little slow um, on the large um, turrets due to its small dps output so here we can see that um, if we just target the station itself um, the missiles do also lock onto the target um, onto the station and uh, not not the surface elements and we'll just keep pounding at it uh, at your command um, right now it's using attack my current enemy um, turret setting so later I find out that uh, the interceptor missiles which need to acquire target lock um, can only lock the target at about 28 kilometers away so even though it has a 138 effective range which means the the missile's um, lifetime really um, uh, and times the speed uh, give it, gives it um, 138 kilometers range but uh, weapon lock does not exceed 30 kilometers which is still okay if we're talking about we're engaging a capital ship like an I or a K you can still rel do that at a relative um, comfort if you say you got a rattlesnake which is pretty fast and um, you were just trying to kite you were just trying to kite um, the Xenon capitals or any other capitals for that matter um, that could turn out to be useful to arm them with 760 interceptor missiles because uh, you probably will have enough to take out um, all the surface uh, dangerous surface elements uh, before um, you run out of ammo Okay, so this is the test with the tracking launchers, and now we move to dump fire launchers after finding out the scatter missiles only work with um, dump fire launchers. And here we go, going into her Darkest Cascade again for our test. Stay 
It's uh, becoming my perfect um, target practice spot and experiment spot. Uh, as we can see, a K right in our way. So, should try out 46 kilometers um, range. Supposedly, we should see missiles firing away with the K at 16 kilometers. And it did not work. So I have no idea why it doesn't work. Uh, first of all, um, they weren't armed. Okay, so let's rearm them again. And it's uh, we still see no missiles. And the K is approaching fast, close into range. Our main guns is just about five kilometers away uh, um, of range as well. As you can see. It's approaching fast and I still see no missiles. This is not going to bode too well. So that's funny because um, the scatter missiles generally, I don't think it requires um, any weapon lock. It's not a tracker missiles. It's on a dump fire launcher. So why does my missile turret don't that warp fire? I have absolutely no idea. And I'm forced to take out all these large gravitons and here we can see the missiles started firing and that was when the K is within about three kilometers distance uh, it looks fairly pretty and they do have good um, DPS output but again um, at this rate uh, this missile is only very useful in terms of brawling and uh, I would consider that like a really a waste of its uh, true ability uh, I mean what is the point of having, having it able to hit uh, fly 46 kilometers but um, it won't fire when it's equipped on um, a turret so uh, as we can see um, it has some really really crazy DPS output. The scatter missiles are a little bit like cluster missiles, but they travel much faster. Uh, about 980 kilo, uh, sorry, 980 meters per second. So, so they are much, much um, faster than reloading, traveling to target, and the fire rate is rather high um, compared to cluster missiles and the damage is still comparatively um, comparatively high right so at the moment we just don't believe that this ain't working at a um, greater distance so we were locking at a huge target which is a station now and trying to hope that our turret will fire and apparently it doesn't we try a few things such as uh, turning off the turret and turning it on again um, which arm and disarm uh, obviously it didn't work so at 16 kilometers uh, 46 kilometer range missile turret would not fire even for a down fire turret which is again rather rather disappointing and uh, we just try to go a little closer and a little closer uh, we really want to see at what distance does the turret finally gets triggered so we go in closer and closer now we're within about 10 kilometers and we can still see no got fired so also this is some kind of exception because on the turrets, um, a, a dumbfire missile don't need weapon lock, does it? So why does it does it not shoot? I have no idea. And we are now getting super close. And I'm running out of ideas too, by the way. Switching the turret behavior, I'm at 9.7 kilometers. Trying to go even closer. 
and still no shots, no shots fired. And so we go closer and closer and just keep you know, a keen eye on when will there be any shots fired or it would not fire at all. Yeah, under 6 kilometers, under 5.5, slowly shorter, and finally about 5.5 kilometers, these scatter missiles started firing. That is also about the same range as my um, flat cannons. So the verdict is this is pretty useless for kiting or even a structure bashing. You cannot safely engage the structure at long range with the scatter missile. And so here we go, um, testing it out. This is where we find out the actual lock range of the interceptor missiles. And we use that on a um, actual main weapon, a missile launcher on the on a nemesis. So this is when we um, realize the behavior of some of these tracker missiles, which uh, could prove to be uh, more de desirable if there are some adjustment made to it. Uh, it's vanilla shape, it's really not helping much. And the encyclopedia did not provide enough um, enough information about how it's used. So we are 36 kilometers and we can see that we are unable to fire the missiles because it requires sorry because it requires a weapon lock and we're just making sure we have the missiles armed and here we go going closer and closer just to find out when at what distance would a weapon lock start it to initialize we are 29 about 29 kilometers or 28 and this is when um, we can start firing the missiles after acquiring a missile lock and as we can see that um, once that we're firing these missiles we can snipe their turrets if we so wish to choose to by having the missile as our main weapon it does not work too well even though it's a tracking missile, it does not work too well if you don't, um, you don't have the surface element um, in your line of sight. They don't tend to go around and hit in a smart way. So even trying to shoot it at, uh, at a um, rather sharp angle. Um, they still won't hit your intended target um, if it's out of your line of sight and so while, while it's doable um, it's probably recommended that you use some damage mods on um, the interceptor missile because of their relatively low um, damage output I do not have access to higher level mods, so I don't know if there's a mod that improves lock range. But at the moment, um, engagement range is not exactly an issue um, for the interceptor missile. Uh, the ability um, to carry large amount of missiles, however, um, is still a problem for medium ships. And for larger ships, don't, you can still use them um, to snipe your target pretty well um, as long as you're within about 25 kilometers range of your intended target. They should work a treat um, with larger ships like, um, like the Rattlesnake, which is also fast enough um, to maneuver around your target. And here we go, we're going to try out the swarm missiles. 
Uh, small missiles are tracking missiles. Um, the they are also the uh, one of the common common missiles um, that's available um, to every faction. Um, they have good splash damage and output. Uh, the best thing about them is that they are um, they are also fire and forget. The only thing is um, they do have a um, limited range, so a uh, bit of a missile lifetime um, mod to improve your missile range or, um, is much more desirable as they usually don't hit their target on the first approach. And that's exactly what we see here. Uh, being in a medium ship is not very useful um, in Darkness Cascade because of the shield recharge rate. Um, the shields um, don't recharge fast enough um, to offset the environmental hazard in Darkness Cascade. Other than that, swarm missiles. Um, are just uh, one of the best vanilla, um, like widely available vanilla red missile. So we're trying to use the small missiles uh, with the projector or lifetime um, mod. I'm trying to engage the surface elements from um, from safe distance, which is roughly about 10 kilometers um, and what's happened is that um, the swarm missiles actually were not even with the uh, as we can see this uh, impulse turret is actually invisible here um, on a uh, partially constructed um, solar panel and no matter how many shots are fired, somehow um, uh, due to some particular nature um, the missiles either didn't work as intended uh, within uh, um, the effective range um, or whatever, um, it just doesn't seem to be making any damage to any of the surface element I targeted, even with a clear line of sight. Or obviously the 8.5 or so, or the 8 kilometer or so, um, and the effective range plus near 20% extra projectile lifetime um, just didn't work at all but I have no intention of um, trying to get closer um, because that sort of defeat the purpose of um, trying to kite um, enemy fire or, or um, actually pounding the structure at Satellite. the um, safe distance that I that that was the whole point of testing out the missiles but the swarm missiles are pretty much unmatched however for um, for dealing with um, small fighters even though their speed um, could use some um, improvement because they only travel at two, up sub 200 meters per second, they don't hit the um, they don't hit your in, intended target at all. Um, if uh, if they are in faster ship, and it is true for all almost all xenon small and medium ships, they are all traveling cruising faster than 200 meters per second so here we are um, trying out the starburst missile again um, this time trying to figure out the actual locking distance of the starburst missile 
and this is where we find out the roughly five kilometer in lock-in range um, we would not be able to find it out until we actually um, have it in the main gun as we can see there um, but that that is a big that is a big direct here but it didn't take the P out I uh, don't think all three missiles hit, probably just two. And bear in mind that the Starburst missiles are still more suitable taking out stationary um, um, targets um, that's not um, well armed. Because uh, we'll just find out in a little bit that their locking range is pretty disappointing as well. About the same as the scatter missile, which doesn't quite require a lock at between five to six kilometers, is when you can actually lock. Uh, you can pretty much see me um, flee in the battlefield after unloading a volley or two on the K, as the K is shooting uh, as I get into awfully close um, range. Um, of the Graviton turrets. So, yep, so three missiles, they all hit and they were unable to take out the P. Uh, that would be different if we have four, of course. So, we're letting the K deal with the. Uh, here, here we're already suffering um, hull damage because it's not a really good missile for um, dogfighting. They are. So they are more for um, trying to attempting to hit slow moving targets. So we're backing away a little bit to see um, at what distance we can maintain our lock. And that was just about five kilometers, as we uh, have mentioned earlier. And so, let's repair my ship on the other side of the gate. This is my blockade. Um, and welcome to Activa's Choice. Uh, my blockade holds pretty well against it, any Xenons. So I just wait until the Xenons, uh, the K, take out the, um, take out the two behemoth before I come back and experiment once again with the starburst missile because we did not have a good look uh, last round uh, before we were forced to flee and here we go 7.5 kilometers and no weapon lock 6 kilometers and no weapon lock and we're at 5.5 kilometers and there we have weapon lock and we are within uh, we're within danger range of the. We're within weapon range of the graviton turret as well, and so my verdict, obviously, starburst missiles are useless because, apart from the speed advantage, uh, no, I'd, and also um, the amount of missiles that you can carry, none of them match the heavy torpedoes. They don't work any better than the heavy torpedoes, uh, which is fairly disappointing. Um, as you thought, um, all these missiles, and um, you were hoping that some of them would uh, behave differently. So yeah, without mods and things that changes the weapon properties, uh, vanilla missile behaviors are pretty disappointing so just to confirm the uselessness of the missiles 5.5 kilometer is the lock range and given that they are tracking missiles 
they are actually not smart at all. They pretty much went all the way around and hit that big chunk of wreck in front of me. Instead of uh, turn around a little bit to hit the target. Well, it's probably better than ghosting through the obstacle. That would probably be cheating. But here we go. Um, Angry K is shooting at me again. So, time for me to go because that's not very useful. Luckily, the nemesis with the split engines are very good at running away. Oh, back to the drawing board again. And this time we're going to use torpedoes. And so just testing out um, what some people have already proved to be working and making sure that they are still working with the latest um, public release of um, X4 is that um, arming your um, ship with torpedo launchers and one of the longest range projectile weapons or energy weapons because without that um, a lot of times um, your fighters will not keep distance even though you say torpedoes have 12 kilometer of range um, the fighters often get themselves into very close range um, a dangerous zone of the graviton turrets before they let off um, their volley of torpedoes and so as, port, as the, some of the forum posts says, um, arming a long range gun should solve the problem and, and here is what we're trying to do to find out. Still going on with the same lovely K as our practice target, this time letting the AI fly the ship with an attack order. Um, in Tharkas Cascade, Let's go and make sure we do not use boost command because um, that will deplete our shields um, pretty much leaving us with no buffer. So we go with uh, shoot to disable to see if it targets subsystems and also um, uncheck use boost. And here we go and um, we can see uh, first volley is successful um, it's been let off at about 8 or 9 kilometers away and although we did got in a little bit close um, but we can see that it, uh, the theory and the method still works um, in the latest build uh, and so the first volley already took out the uh, grabbing graviton turrets both graviton turrets between the engines which is a good thing to see um, however letting the AI uh, as we will see right now is that um, the behavior is pretty safe but the AI do also take a long time to circle around um, and to get into position for the subsequent volleys and they do also get into undesirable range however with the fast engines you probably do not have to worry about it because they are traversing at a tangent um, to the turrets instead of going directly at it versus just the gunships so the turrets will have uh, less likely chance of um, hitting your ships so here we go um, as it fires off the um, mass driver which is that big beam of death uh, which usually don't hit anything and do extremely meaningful damage and it will let off the um, there we go we can hear that sound and out of the four torpedoes uh, I think one missed uh, the only thing is um, 
Well, it was a bit disappointing again that it was hitting the top armor and not the subsistence with that um, particular volley. Just to confirm that um, how efficient, like to gauge the efficiency of uh, this setup, another volley has been fired off, and um, we can see that we're already. Uh, being engaged by some of the escorts and uh, where it does not bode well for us. So um, over here we just can't see the missiles, they're a bit too small with my camera views but uh, we can see a big chunk <laughs> and also a uh, missed, another missed torpedo, I have no idea why that missed. <laughs> um, but one um basically it means um one nemesis is not enough to take on the k with the amount of torpedoes it has it carries uh, 52 torpedoes with a modded uh, chassis so it can fire about uh, 13 shots uh, 13 volleys and um due to the fact that it takes a long time to circle around the K, um, its target. It was not able to overcome, single handedly overcome the shield generation of the K. So you do need, you do need a squadron of the, um, of uh, torpedo bombers. If you want to take down any, any um, Xenon capitals. Okay, and so this fairly much concludes our um, missile testing um, series, um, part of our playthrough as well. And um, we have a few viable uh, fittings or fleet compositions um, that we can go by uh, for various size of ships, but um, overall. Um, uh, the current missile mechanics is rather disappointing with very little variety um, and we would I would personally like to see that to be expanded upon in the future uh, so this is it for now um, thank you for watching my videos um, if you like my videos uh, feel free to subscribe or follow me um, uh, thank you for all your comments and the likes and uh, let me know um, if you want to um, share some of your opinions um, in the comment section below and what you like to see me play. Uh, we'll see you again next time. Bye for now.